Welcome back to Fox and Friends. In just a few hours, the jury will get the Casey Anthony murder case after the defense and prosecution both made their cases to the jury one final time. She died because she could not breathe. She died because she had three pieces of duct tape over her nose and mouth, and she died because her mother decided that the life that she wanted was more important. This murder was premeditated, and the defendant is guilty. Just look at what they have and what they don't have. The, all the fantasy forensics in the world don't make it so. All of the lies that you've had to swim through don't get you any closer to the truth. So how did each side do? We turn now to criminal defense attorney Lawrence Walters and former prosecutor and adjunct professor at the University of Miami School of Law, Mark Iglarch. Nice to have both of you here. Mark, I want to start with you. You're a former prosecutor. You're sitting there watching Jose Baez give his defense closing arguments. Are you quivering in your boots? Did he do a good job? Are you sitting there saying, shaking your head, we got this one? Well, I'm thinking that he's doing the best that he can at his level of awareness. That's probably the nicest thing I could say about it. And I'm concerned because the fate of Casey Anthony is not decided like idle contestants. You don't get to call in and vote. If that was the case, it'd be an easy slam dunk for the prosecutors. The defense was able to raise some reasonable doubts that have me concerned about what these jurors are going to do. Uh, Lawrence, let me get your take on it and ask you the reverse question. You're sitting there watching the prosecution. Are you quivering in your boots saying, I don't know how we're going to defend this? Not at all. Uh, reasonable doubt is all over this case. Uh, the, the facts simply do not establish any sort of premeditated murder. Jeff Ashton did a, a great job in an emotional closing statement, but his conclusions weren't based on factual evidence. There, there's still no evidence of how Kaylee died. Um, and how, how, who, who killed her, the time of death. So the too many unanswered questions for a premeditated murder See, conviction in my I view. I disagree. Go ahead, Mark. I, I disagree. I, while I do believe that it's possible that these jurors could find her not guilty because we don't know who these people are, there's certainly enough to go forward and say that they've proven this case. You've got the chloroform searches not done by the mom, as was alleged initially when she took the stand. She was grossly impeached during the rebuttal case. You've got the pieces of duct tape, one by one by one. And as the prosecutor so eloquently pointed out, why would anyone put three separate duct tape, pieces of duct tape, across a child's mouth unless you don't want that child to breathe? That's premeditation. Well yeah, Jose Baez dismantled the whole internet search issue by showing that that was just a, a contrived report. The first report showed one search for chloroform after uh, Casey found something about it on MySpace, and then all of a sudden they come up with a, a, a report that shows 85 searches. I don't think the jury's buying any of that. The duct tape was found on Kaylee's hair. Uh, so, you know, where it was placed or how it was placed is, is anybody's guess. Nobody knows who put anything where. That's all reasonable doubt. I, I don't see how a jury convicts on premeditated murder here. Mark, you're sitting and there, so you're watching the jury. Mark, you're sitting there, you're watching the jury. You have to, I mean, take off this hat for a second. You've got to be concerned a little bit that maybe the defense muddied the water here enough to provide some reasonable doubt. Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm, I'm extraordinarily concerned because I, in my heart, I, I know what took place. But again, legal proof and factual proof are two different things. Without question, there's a problem. The guy who discovered the bones, Roy Cronk, admitted at least to some extent that he tampered with the bones, the remains. And as such, the, there's a huge question as to then where was the tape originally, not when the remains were recovered, but if the tape wasn't necessarily in the same position, then there goes your murder weapon. And Lawrence, did they paint, did the prosecution paint enough of, a, def, uh, of a, uh, a point here on motive? That's something we haven't heard a lot about. We had to wait till the closing arguments yesterday to finally get this whole narrative about Casey Anthony and to why exactly she would want to kill Kaylee, to silence her. Do you think the jury was buying it? You know, motive is a, a weak point in the prosecution's theory here. Uh, because Casey wanted to go out and party was, was the motive. That, that's a, a bit of a jump, I think, for the jury to conclude that that would be a sufficient motive for somebody who obviously loved her child. All indications were that uh, Kaylee had a great life with her mother, that she was loved, and all the witnesses testified well, to that. We'll, we'll, then we'll one day to snap and say, I'm going to kill my child? 
Well, we'll have to see if the jury makes that leap or if it was not much of a leap at all for them. We're going to have continuing coverage today at 8.30 here. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you. We, I know we'll be watching very closely. The Casey Anthony trial continues this morning at 8.30 Eastern time right here on Fox News Channel. Thanks, gentlemen.